Have you ever wondered what the differences are between an e-mountain bike and a mountain bike when you're out and about on those rides? On things such as your heart rate, the average speed, and the time it takes to complete those rides. Well, today we're out on a 10 kilometer ride on both an e-bike and a mountain bike to look at all that data. We're heading out on a 10 kilometer loop of mixed terrain, big climbs, flowing single track, and some great descents. One loop's gonna be done on a standard mountain bike, the other on the e-mountain bike. After the ride, we're gonna take a look at the data from a Garmin from each of those rides on each bike to see what the actual real world differences are in terms of effort involved and the times taken. Today's challenge, I have my trusty Husqvarna e Hartel, the Light Cross 6. Oh, God, that's slipperier than what I thought. Then I also have a Canyon Stoic mountain bike Hartel. Both 29 inch bikes rolling on exactly the same tires, front and rear on these bikes, same sizing. The only difference on these bikes is obviously on the e bike, I have that Shimano E8000 motor with 70 Newton meters of torque and a 630 watt hour battery to help me cruise along compared to my own leg power on the Canyon. To record the data from today's ride, I'm gonna be using both my Garmin Edge 830 head unit and my Garmin Phoenix watch. Now, both of these units record pretty much the same data, but sometimes it's nice not to have all that information right in your face for like the head unit and just strap on that watch. And the data that they're gonna record is gonna be the speed, the distance, the heart rate, and even let me know about when I got incoming calls and text messages on my smartphone. So if you're training or trying to get fit, a Garmin is a great tool, especially if you combine it with that Connect app, you can keep track of everything along the way. It's got these cool heat maps on there where you can see whether you're going faster or slower than your previous efforts and see what heart rate zones you're working in too. It's a really helpful tool for next time you hit it out on the trails to really monitor your progress. Right, first up, I'm gonna hit this loop on the mountain bike for a few different reasons. Firstly, I'm feeling pretty fresh and I've got all my energy in the tank. And secondly, if I was to ride the mountain bike after the e-bike, I think it's gonna feel really, really slow. And when I do get on my e-bike, I really wanna appreciate that power that's coming from the motor. So let's get this show on the road. So let's get it underway. Whoa. Actually feeling pretty sprightly straight out the door. I mean, straight away, I'm not battling with that speed limiter. Cruising along quite nicely. 22 miles per hour, no drag whatsoever. And this could actually make quite a big difference on these flatter sections. Hundred and twenty one. Beats for a minute. Painfully slow, one point seven miles per hour. I'm already looking for an easier gear grinding away. Whoa, so slow when I look at my speed. Heart's pounding. Whew, for not a lot of reward and it's just not much much fun just bouncing around. Ah. Definitely feeling a lot more skittish underfoot as well, a lighter bike. Feel it dancing around a bit more. Something I think you miss with an e-bike with the weight. Weight of it kind of keeps it a lot more planted. Great thing about the watch and obviously the head unit, if you've got a heart monitor strap, is you can stay in those selected heart rate training zones. Get downhill action, finally. Seems to be all the way up on the uphills. Feeling a bit sick actually, my legs are quite jelly like. I don't think I, on any mountain bike you go that deep, especially for that long. It's the time that it takes to get up the hills. That's what's killing me. Love being out here and listening to all the stuff going on in the woods. When you've got that electric wine, 
of a motor, it definitely changes things. Here we go. Oh, easy as that. It wasn't even a struggle. All right, here's that horrible mud. But have I enjoyed mountain bike? Definitely have. Different type of riding. You go slower, but you, I think, work harder. I'm not a million miles off from picking the e-bike up now, so cranking it up into turbo. Well, you can see my warp speed after this. Right, that is the 10K done on the mountain bike. It's time to head back to the van, have a little bit of a breather, something to eat, something to drink, and head back out for another loop and see how that data compares mountain bike to e-bike. Right, round two, I've had a little bit of a rest after riding the mountain bike, and now it is time for the e-bike. Trail mode engage, let's go. Right, I just noticed on that road section, the limiter of this bike definitely come into play, as did that weight, it felt way slower. No point riding an e-bike if you're not gonna use those power modes. Drop those longer rides, riding an eco, but part of the fun of an e-bike to utilize that power. On the mountain bike, I was simply crawling up here at snail's pace, but on the e-bike, I'm in trail mode, picking my line. Definitely faster on the E, you can really feel that weight of the bike just pushing you, whoa, just pushing you through all that. Just more fun. I'm literally riding with a smile on my face rather than worrying if I'm gonna be sick. The terrain around you becomes alive. You're sort of almost like riding a flowy trail all the time. The section is on the mountain bike. I was so tired from the climb. I just had to poot along here, but I'm still in eco mode here. And even with that speed limiter in place and being in eco mode, I can turn way faster. All right, I'm gonna crank up the trail for the steep of it. Up the hill, we're still working at maximum heart rate. I don't know if you can see that, but that's 182 at 183 beats per minute. Still in trail mode. This is the highest point on the ride. So maybe I could have went faster in turbo or boost mode up there, but not had as good workout. I could have gone slower again in eco, more of a workout. That is the thing I absolutely love about e-bikes. I'm holding. 170 beats per minute, which goes to show even with that assistance turned right up to working hard, you can just keep your flow as well. If you, if you stop, start, stop, start, cool down, warm up. And the grip of these bikes, insane. Because of the weight on the tire, just flow. So fast. Greenwood Pecker, can you hear it? I'm not a bird geek. into the super muddy section, which nearly stalled the mountain bike. E-bike as well, you can just point and shoot. If you see a line, you think it's a good one, wind her open and climb up the bank. Whew. Right, 10K ticked off on the e-bike. Definitely a different experience for sure. But how does that data compare? Was I faster, was I slower? Did my heart beat any less? How many calories did I burn? Let's go take a look at that data. I've downloaded both of those rides to the Connect app. And I've got all the stats in front of me here. So first up, how long was the ride? So how long did it actually take? Well, first up, the e-mountain bike did it in 31 minutes and four seconds versus the mountain bike time of 45 minutes and five seconds. And the average speed, well, the e-mountain bike it was around 20 kilometers per hour throughout the ride, and the mountain bike was at 12 kilometers per hour. So how hard was this ride? It was a nice balanced ride. The type of ride you could probably do in your lunch hour at work is around 900 feet of climbing. And if you take a look at that heat map, there's a mix of different heart rate zones in here. And even though the average heart rate is slightly more on the mountain bike. For the mountain bike, I spent 26 minutes in zone four and five, the harder efforts, 22 minutes in zone two and three, the easy efforts versus the e-mountain bike where I spent 30 minutes in zone four and five, the harder efforts, and 13 minutes in zone two and three, the easy efforts. Now the reason for this is simply taking longer to get those climbs on the mountain bike and those sections in between, because if you take a look at the overall effort, well, 
the average heart rate is pretty close. 144 beats per minute on the e-mountain bike versus 153 on the mountain bike. And the maximum, well, that's even closer. We hit 189 on the e-bike versus 190 on the mountain bike. And calories burnt, well, no surprise here because less time was spent on the e-mountain bike. That was 379 calories versus the 670 calories that you would have burnt on a mountain bike. The only place the mountain bike was faster on the loop was the short road sections where the e-bike's limiter was definitely a burden. Taking a look at the longest climb, well, that took me three minutes 59 on the e-bike and took me eight minutes 30 on the mountain bike. So if I take a look at the total time, well, in a full lunch hour ride, I could have doubled up and potentially covered 20 kilometers of trail compared to the 15 that I could have done on a mountain bike. You're just getting in way more trails in less time and the effort you put into it is ultimately down to you. So there we have it, some interesting data and it always got me wondering what exactly I was missing out on by riding an e-mountain bike over a mountain bike. And it turns out not a lot, especially if you put the effort into the bike. But let us know if you still ride a mountain bike as well as your e-bike and how you get on. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and whilst you're there, check out the merch shop.